to the letters to the Romans. First and second Corinthians, Galatians and Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians. Everybody. First and second Thessalonians, first and second Timothy, Titus and Philemon, Hebrews, James. First and second Peter, Doctor McNeil, second and third John, Jude and the Revelation. All right, children. Doctor McNeil, your slates for a few minutes and try to say it without them. I need to talk to you. Well, good morning, Miss Huddleston, and a pleasant day to you. I'm sorry. I suppose I did sound a bit abrupt. Private conversation would be a pleasure with you at any time. You're doing a good job with the children, Chris. Thank you. They're wonderful children. They like you too. I know. <clears throat> they told me. Dr. McNeil, you baffle me. How so, Miss Huddleston? David and I work very hard at the mission to bring these families together and to educate their children. You know, there is so much you could do, and yet you hold back. Oh, I seem to remember giving a lecture to your class only yesterday. Yes. And you were inspiring. Do you really mean it? Yes. But you have carefully detached yourself from any real involvement with the church or the mission work. And yesterday only proves how influential you could be in God's plan for these children. I don't know God's plan. But I do know these children. I delivered them, Miss Huddleston. And I cared for them long before you or David Grantland ever met them. You don't think religion has anything to offer you, do you? And you don't have one tiny speck of vision of all the great work the mission could do if we only had some help. Do you? What is your vision? Oh, there's so much we could do. Herb gardens to spark good cooking, cabinet making for the men. We need to set up classes to teach mothers how to take care of their babies. And that's what I wanted to talk to you about. Babies. What about them? There are just so many of them. And the girls are just too young to understand. Ah, and you plan to teach them about the birds and the bees, is that it? It doesn't have to be that specific, Doctor. What then? I'm just talking about hygiene classes. You teach the boys, I teach the girls. The do's and don'ts of mountain lovemaking, eh? Good Lord, woman, they all live in the same room. They're born knowing. Then we'll reteach them. Look, I think your ideas are commendable, and I admire your enthusiasm. But from what I hear from Alice Henderson and the preacher, this is hardly what they call Christianity in action. Of course not. Of course, every action comes from a belief in something or someone. And what do you believe in? Well, Miss Alice says... I didn't ask you what Alice Henderson believes. I want to know what you think. I think that God made us all with a free choice. And what does that mean? That evil is very real and powerful, and that some of us have been living in ivory towers. Stop mouthing platitudes. Don't you have a thought to call your own? My question is, why is Christianity so important to you? Never mind. It's much too serious a discussion for a young girl like you. All right. All right, you realist. Religion can hold a can of the hard cash or a loaded shotgun or a box of pills. That's what you think, isn't it? Isn't it? Well, you've got spirit. I'll grant you we that. We are not talking about my spirit, Doctor. We are talking about education. John Spencer and Bessie Colbert may have to marry unless someone teaches them the facts of life. And Rob Allen, who dreams of becoming a writer, is losing his eyesight from poor diet and candlelight. The only hope these children have is education, which is what this mission provides. Well, let it out. I don't blame you, Christy. At least it's you talking now, not some character you're trying to be. I wanted to slap his face. He made me feel like a 10-year-old. I hated that feeling, and I hated him. I wanted, I wanted I didn't have the least idea what I wanted. Neil McNeil is a troubled man. Don't let him beat you down. It's my own doubts, David. 
Am I doing everything wrong? No. Sometimes I wonder if I'm meant for the ministry. I think you were called, David. Maybe. But I know you were. No matter what the great Dr. McNeil says, you're meant to be here. You're going to change this place. You already changed me. I know we haven't known each other that long. But you're important to me. You're getting more important all the time. David. I know it's too soon to talk about any... attachment. But I just wanted you to know. And I hope someday you feel the same way about me. Maybe. Someday. One plus one, two plus two, is... My head hurts, teacher. I don't quite remember those figures. You lie, little girl. You studied them figures most all night, teacher. Don't spoil it, Greg. Come on, little girl. I know you can do it. One plus one is... Two. Two plus two is four. Four plus four is eight. Five plus five is ten. Six plus six, six is, is twelve. Seven, seven plus seven is fourteen. Eight, eight plus eight is sixteen. Nine, nine plus nine is eighteen. Ten plus ten is twenty. Today's my last day, teacher. No, Rob. Why? My daddy needs me to work. I'm so sorry. You've come so far in such a short time. I guess my eyes will get that rest now, teacher. Don't give up. You keep writing and enter that contest. Washing fingers, washing, washing toes. Watch me wash my face up, happy as it goes. All right, girls, today we're going to talk about something new. How many of you have ever seen a calf be before? You've been testing the milk boy and you don't know the cow. Colton, what's wrong? Clear as glass, who they learn it from. Step aside, Rob Allen. I, I must ask you to step outside with You're me. You're running a porting school here and I'm opposing you down. Please listen to reason. I listened. And I watched. Don't think I don't know what you're up to at nights in the mission. And soon enough, everybody's going to know. What are you talking about? Last night, I was coon hunting. But I seen you kissing the preacher. Shame. Mr. Colburn, you should be ashamed hiding and spying in the dark. I'll not have you teaching your ways to my Bessie. Don't take them away, Mr. Colburn. Don't What'd you do that for? I ain't got no quarrel with you, John Spencer. You're wrong, Mr. Coburn. Robbie ain't courting Bessie. Then why is she writing in love letters? No, no, Daddy, don't. John Spencer, don't bring him. No. Dear Rob, I know you're John's best friend. friend. Might as well be brothers, but that don't change what I feel for you. Don't read it, John. Don't read it. I feel it in the morning when the dew is on the flowers, no, and in the no, evening no, when the lightning bugs no. blink. They seem to say, they seem over, to say and over, over and over again, please. Bessie loves Rob, please. Bessie loves Rob. You dream the dreams I dream. I can hear it in your stories. Please take me with you, Rob Allen, wherever you go. Love, Bessie. John ran for the hills like a wounded animal. Today, he had lost his only love and his best friend. John? John Spencer? Thank mm -hmm. you. 